episode of Your 704. For now, we're headed back out to talk to more of the city's tastemakers, entrepreneurs, chefs, and bartenders as they introduce us and you to some of Charlotte's most interesting spots. We'll see you next time. Following breaking news now at noon, Mecklenburg County Sheriff Gary McFadden taking a strong stance against a North Carolina immigration bill. It would require sheriffs to cooperate with ICE. We are live at a news conference about to get underway. And breaking in York County, deputies desperately searching for this pregnant 16-year-old. She was last seen four days ago. And breaking in Union County, police now believe they've identified the vehicle that likely hit and killed a woman in Monroe. And tracking cloudy skies plus a threat for rain and when we could see some stronger storms in your forecast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brittany Johnson. We start with the rain that is inching closer and closer to our area. Take a look. This is a live look at our area's only local radar. You can see some of the showers here popping up. The mountains, they saw plenty of rain and damage yesterday. Take a look. Looks like they're getting a little time to dry out right now, but we expect that to change. Also want to give you a live look at Uptown Charlotte right now. You can see kind of a break in some spots, but you also have those clouds there hovering over the skyline. Let's go ahead and get to meteorologist Tony Sadiku. You've been tracking the rain across the area, Tony, and it looks like we might have a break. Yeah, absolutely, especially after what we saw this morning. So some areas dealing with some light showers on that morning commute. We've started to get a break for now, but we are still watching uh, a few showers that are starting to pop up across town. So there's Catawba, uh, a few showers popping up across the Catawba River. All of this is headed towards the Statesville area. So moving north and east, quick little downpour headed your way here over the next little bit. So the time on that should be in the next uh, about uh, 30 to 40 minutes as everything's moving uh, to the north and east. Another shower back behind it. You can see See very uh, garden variety stuff here, not widespread. Lincolnton as well, heavier downpours there. Again, all of this is moving towards the north and east. As we continue to track this one, you can see this may make its way out towards the uh, Denver area, maybe, maybe even a further north of uh, Cornelius, the Lake Norman area, as we head towards later on this afternoon. Bigger picture shows most areas are dry. More showers back behind here and will work its way to Burke and Caldwell County, but we will see that activity picking up as we head towards this afternoon. I'll show you what will finally dry things out in your forecast when I come back. Brittany. We are following breaking news. Deputies in York County are searching for a pregnant teen. She hasn't been seen for four days. We want to show you a picture. This is of Madison Knopf. Deputies say that she was last seen at the Village Station Apartments in Rock Hill. She is seven months pregnant and missed a doctor's appointment yesterday. So if you see her or know where she is, call York County deputies right away. Also breaking at noon, Mecklenburg County Sheriff Gary McFadden and two other North Carolina sheriffs are getting ready to address a state immigration bill. Right now you're getting a live look. This is where it looks like a crowd is waiting for them to begin a news conference. They're in Raleigh. The sheriffs are from Mecklenburg, Wake and Buncombe counties and they're all against House Bill 370. It would force sheriffs to cooperate with immigration officers. That means that police and deputies would have to figure out if a suspect is a legal resident or not when they're arrested. Looks like they're just a few minutes from getting started. Over the last few months, Sheriff McFadden has taken a strong stance against working with ICE agents. He ended the 287G program as soon as he took office. It allows deputies to run an inmate's name through immigration databases. In Charlotte, several local groups are addressing immigration head on. They're focusing on how it plays a key role in Charlotte and Mecklenburg County's economies. Our Glenn Counts joins us now live in Glenn. They say that immigrants are a key part of our community. Well, Brittany, they do. And uh, basically what they are doing is taking a strong stance uh, alongside uh, Sheriff McFadden and uh, all those other law enforcement officials who do not want to uh, emphasize 287G. Step out of the way here. Uh, obviously, what uh, they are saying is that uh, lawmakers should not have a focus on jails, cops, crimes, and courts, that that is a mistake. 
that immigration boosters uh, bolsters the entire community. Now, what they are doing is listening to a presentation from the New American Economy. The group is presenting specific findings from Me Mecklenburg County about how immigration basically bolsters the area's bottom line, so to speak. Uh, Andrew Lim, who is the director of NAA, says that if the legislature forces the sheriffs to comply with that directive, that in effect we are all going to lose. Now, uh, for an example, they say that uh, immigrants have generated close to $5 billion in local revenue here in Mecklenburg County, paid uh, almost $900 million in federal taxes, and another uh, $400 million in uh, state and local taxes. And so they're saying that they uh, prop up the bottom line, that they are valued uh, members of the community, and that uh, basically the way that these sheriff's, depart these sheriff's agencies are playing this out, that they are headed down the right path and that the legislators would be going down the wrong path by forcing them to play ball with the federal government. Back to you. Thank you. Our Glenn Counts reporting live for us. Glenn, we'll see you back at 5. Thanks. Even more breaking news at noon. Police now say this tractor trailer may be involved in the death of a woman in Monroe. Officers believe a 2018 or newer model Freightliner truck hit Daphne Alvarez Torres Saturday around 3 a.m. Her body wasn't found until Monday near the Tyson Foods plant on Highway 74. That's where she worked. Police say they're asking anyone with information to call them right away. In the next hour, two of three suspects accused of robbing and killing a teen will face a judge. Police say Andy Garcia and two others killed 17-year-old Alicia Johnson on Beatty's Ford Road on Monday. Garcia already had an electronic monitor because of an arrest in February. Police say that he and another suspect robbed two women using a baseball bat. One of those victims, LaJoy Lightfoot, spoke to Channel 9 on the phone. She is outraged that Garcia was out of jail in the first place. I feel very blessed and very fortunate that I'm still here. Um, it could have happened to me. It could have happened to anyone. In Monday's murder, police say the three suspects wanted Johnson's car. Police are asking people who buy things online like OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace to meet up at a safe location. Specifically, they're talking about exchange zones at police departments and 13 QT gas stations. CMPD says they have investigated 19 of these types of robberies this year. They say they have seen a decrease in the last two years. They hope that trend continues. It's very difficult for us to count crimes that don't happen if we're not aware of them uh, and that we want people and we encourage people to utilize our exchange zone. Now, the most notable cases that police have investigated include the deadly shooting of Zach Finch back in 2017. The college baseball player showed up to Farmer Street in West Charlotte to buy a phone. Instead, he was killed. This is a change that many people say needs to happen, but it'll cost everyone a little more money. Mecklenburg County Commissioners heard from the public last night about raising the sales tax for the Arts and Science Council. A majority of commissioners seemed to support it at last night's meeting. Art supporters say donations dropped and the Arts and Science Council is still recovering from the recession. The groups, large and small, need a reliable and consistent source of funding to stabilize their op operating budgets. Commissioner Pat Cotham opposes it. She thinks it will unfairly target lower and middle income families. Commissioners will discuss the tax again and they could vote on whether to put it on a public ballot at their next meeting in July. Next Tuesday, commissioners will talk about where that extra money would go. And again, that's July 2nd when they'll likely vote on whether to put that tax hike on the ballot. Authorities are scaling back their search for a mother murdered inside of an Alexander County home. Deputies say Maria Calderon and her two children were killed at their home last weekend. They say Calderon's ex, Aureli Aguirre Aviles, and his current girlfriend, Heidi Wolf, murdered them, then set their Pine Meadows Lane home on fire. The kids were found dead at the home. Deputies have searched the Catawba River for their mother, Calderon. Family friends tell us they're heartbroken. I am broken, and all, all friends is broken, you know, because they are beautiful people. 
Deputies are waiting on autopsy results to learn exactly how the children died. They're following leads as to where their mother's body could be. Avalese and Wolf will face a judge on Friday. Breaking now in Malaysia. Five years after Flight 17 crashed after being shot down, investigators say four people will be charged. Investigators said three Russians and a Ukrainian man will now face murder charges. They're accused of shooting down that flight in July of 2014. It crashed in a field in Ukraine, killing everyone on board. A family event to honor a local officer killed in the line of duty. The inaugural Officer Sheldon Family Fun Day will honor Jordan Sheldon on Saturday. His SUV will be on display at the event, allowing the community to pay their respects. The event will also include some fun for the community, a bounce house, games for kids, food trucks, live music, all of it beginning at 4 o'clock on Saturday from South Broad Street to West McClellan Avenue. Officer Jordan Sheldon died May 4th after police say Michael Aldana shot him during a traffic stop. Aldana then drove to his apartment where he died by suicide. It's still not clear why he shot Officer Sheldon. Now, if you are ready for football to return, you don't have too much longer to wait. Today, the Panthers announced they will start practicing in Spartanburg July 25th. Fans can watch the practices for free at Wofford College. The Panthers will then hold the annual Fan Fest at Bank of America Stadium on August 2nd, and then they'll round out training camp with joint practices with the Buffalo Bills in mid-August. The Panthers are working on a giant bubble over the practice fields in Uptown. Construction is already well underway on the bubble. It's expected to be done before training camp ends. Now, the Panthers are moving their headquarters across the border to South Carolina. Governor Henry McMaster signed an incentives bill earlier this month that will give the team $115 million in tax breaks to move the headquarters to Rock Hill and to build their practice facility there. Tracking some spotty rain today, plus our next system, when it arrives and the impacts it'll bring. Hundreds of college admission tests disappeared. Now, well, students have to take those tests again. The unanswered questions and the school's offer to those students. This can all happen. Well, parents punching and pushing each other in front of their seven year old children. Next, the decision that led to this all out brawl. Weather on WSOC is driven by Toyota of North Charlotte, I 77, exit 23, where big city low prices are just a click away.
Well, punches thrown and parents pushed. This brawl broke out in front of seven year old children at a little league game in Lakewood, Colorado. Name right now, Jesus. Wow. This all started over a call a 13 year old umpire made. Look at that. You can see that's a man came up from behind throwing his arms around another person. You can see punches being thrown there. That's their parents throwing those punches. We're talking about a seven year old baseball game. Seven year olds. It's the parents who need to grow up. Oh, my. Well, police are now searching for the man right there in the white shirt and teal pants. Hundreds of homes will come to Indian land. Last night, Lancaster County leaders approved requests from three developments. Avondale, already approved for 490 new homes, will get 20 more lots. Patterson Preserve nearby will get 177 homes. And Harris Mill off of Henry Harris Road will add 383 homes. For some, the draw of lower taxes and good schools comes at a cost. In order for you to add the homes, you have to also expand. It just can't be about bringing homes here and not expanding the roads. The county put a nine month hold on new neighborhoods in 2015 to tighten up development standards, but growth hasn't let up, and that's causing some to question what's next. Well, every Statesville police officer could be eligible to get a nearly $2,000 raise. On Monday night, City Council approved a first responder career development program. In addition to the raise, it gives officers a 3% annual pay increase and plans to determine a merit increase raise. It also impacts firefighters. The city manager told our partners at the Record and Landmark that it will give first responders pay raises without needing to get a promotion. Now, many local departments have spent the last year or more trying to get pay raises for officers, and many say they've lost officers to other departments in the state and country because they can make thousands of dollars more per year. Just last year, CMPD boosted their starting salary to nearly $50,000. Now we want to take you out to some major breaking news we're covering right now. Live pictures of a crash. This is right in the University City area, McCulloch Drive, near W.T. Harris Boulevard. You can see those two cars there. One looks like a van and that white car. I mean, they're still just crashed right there. First responders just getting to the scene right now. We also know that power lights are out in that area. The stoplights are out. Just a few moments ago, we watched live as people surrounded those vehicles doing their best to help people escape from the vehicles. That overturned van on its side, you can see where the back doors are open. I mean, we watched as people rushed over, trying their best to free anyone who might have been inside there. And you're getting a live look now. This is a view from Chopper 9 Sky Zoom. As those fire trucks, they're just arriving on the scene. You can see that frantic rush to put out the smoke that's just starting to come out from the van right now. We've got our crews working to get more information from Charlotte Fire as they've just arrived, We're trying to learn more also about how this crash happened. You can see there a firefighter kicking there. We're still working to see if there's anyone inside. We know that they opened the back door, but it looks like they're working right now to take off the windshield of that van. So we're going to keep an eye on this scene for you as Charlotte fire crews are just getting to the scene here. This is at a crash in University City. It looks like it shut down that intersection there and the power lights on the, and the stoplights, they're out as well. We want to go ahead now and get you a quick look at your forecast. We know that it's been kind of on and off all day as to whether we'll have rain. Meteorologist Tony Sadiku keeping a close eye on the radar for us. Yeah, absolutely. Right now we are tracking some of those showers pushing into Burke and Caldwell County. You can see light nature stuff, but it is working its way into places like Morganton. So the next 15 minutes or so, eventually up towards Lenore, the next 40 to 50. Also watching some showers further to the east, Hickory Newton as well. So this will be the pattern today, at least through this afternoon as we continue to track uh, scattered nature showers. So very unsettled weather pattern. Meanwhile, heavier downpours and stronger storms are taking place right now across the south and the plains. That's where we'll see the focus for the severe weather today out by places like Dallas to Me uh, Memphis, Nashville, St. Louis. But by tomorrow, you'll see the focus will move towards the mid-Atlantic. So yeah, Charlotte could be under the gun for maybe some uh, slight risk for strong to severe storms. So not going to be widespread, but certainly something we'll be watching. What modes of severe weather. I think the main threat is going to be heavy rain, strong winds. Can't rule that out, especially in some of those uh, downpours and also hail on the lower end of the spectrum. In terms of timing, we'll start with today. There's five o'clock. Notice it's not going to be widespread activity, but don't be surprised on your way home. Maybe driving on 77 or 85, you get caught in a downpour. We'll keep that pattern through about 70 o'clock before we dry things out. So dry conditions overnight. Should be a dry start for the most part for your Thursday morning. So not looking for a re 
sleepy, but breezy winds will kick up ahead of a front tomorrow afternoon. And again, that front will allow any storms we see to be on the strong to severe side. But again, it's not going to be widespread. Right now, temperatures out the door in a cloudy skies are held in check. We've got 80 in Charlotte, but a lot of spots are in the upper 70s. Salisbury 78, Concord as well. Albemarle right now at 79, 67 in Jefferson. Today's forecast should get us up to about 87. Cloudy, humid, the story. Possible off and on showers, heavier downpours by the late evening hours. You got plans to make it to the nice Game. They dealt with a rain delay late yesterday, keeping a 30% chance about 6 o'clock. But notice the rain chances do go down by later on in the evening. Again, 30% chance for a shower tomorrow before we dry things out. Friday looking really nice, less humid, but those temperatures will keep climbing. Low 90s turn to mid 90s by the middle of next week. Wow, so the rain doesn't even help us cool off. Not a little Not bit. Even a lit. All right, thank you so much, Tony. We'll be right back. Well, imagine spending three hours taking a college admissions test only for the school to lose it. Well, 440 students took their ACT tests back in February and March at Pine Crest High School in Moore County, and the principal says those tests got lost. But it's not clear if they were misplaced or thrown away. The school says it'll offer the test again in the fall for free. Well, Charlotte's Levine Children's Hospital is one of the best in the country. U.S. News and World Report ranked the hospital as one of the 50, 50 best pediatric facilities in the country for the 12th year in a row. The rankings factor in patient safety, infection prevention, and nurse to patient staffing. Levine Children's got high marks for its pediatric cancer, cardiology, and neonatal care. Closed captioning is brought to you by. Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time.
All right, so we are seeing some showers right now, Tony. A couple, but if you got outdoor plans, even if you're not seeing rain right okay. now, a good idea to keep the umbrellas on hand this afternoon and evening. We've got more rain to deal with tomorrow, mostly afternoon and evening stuff. Friday, we dry things out. Also, the first day of summer, those temperatures start to climb. Weekend looking good for now. We got a 20% chance for rain on Sunday, but those rain chances may go up. Definitely want to check in with meteorologist John Aaron to okay. have a full look at that with an update beginning at 5. Definitely that time of year where we see the rain and the sun and the heat all together. And that humidity. Right. Feel it. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Eyewitness News starting at 5. Have a great day. WSOC TV is a Cox Media Group station.